Welcome back to the channel. I've uh, got a bit of a treat for you this week. I've, uh, I, in the last video, I was talking about putting a stove jack into my DD 5x5 tarp. However, I had a concern that the embers that come out of the chimney my, might come back down and they always make holes in those type of tarps. They did in the 3x3 that I've got. And someone suggested that I look at the Pomoli Lone Wolf 902 hammock hot tent tarp shelter which I did, and I liked it, I ordered it, and I've got it. So, quite excited about this. So I'm going to put it up, and I'll take you on the journey with me. So here we have what's in the, well, this is the bag. It's actually quite a useful bag, that one, because it's uh, got the clips to go around it. So what have we got? Got a stove jack. The tent itself. and some 550 paracord, which is the ridge line, I believe. And I think somewhere wrapped up in there, there should be some, uh, some pegs, but I've got some pegs anyway. So uh, I'll set about putting the ridge line up, and we'll go from there. So as usual, I've got a loop on the end of one end of the paracord. So we pass that round the tree, going about, just, just around about, Maybe six foot six off the ground. We loop it through, put a previously prepared stick on, and just pull it tight. Um, I'm not using the paracord that it came with because I've already got one and it's got the prussic knots already on it. Um, so I thought I'd use this one. The guy line is only just long enough. So, uh, I noticed that when, uh, I think it's Julian from Lone Wolf 902, when he does it, he, uh, sorry, i just done a quick release knot and putting a stick in there just to hold it all tight. But when he um, does his ridge lines, he doesn't seem to make them too tight because you need a bit of sag in the middle of the ridge line so that uh, the middle of the tent flares out. So, as you can see, the ridge line is up, so we'll uh, unpack the tent. Now, I've found the stove jack, which I want to be on the far side, because the wind is actually blowing towards me. So any embers that come out of the chimney, I want to be going the other way, rather than coming back onto the tent itself, even though it's canvas. I think it might need it a little bit tighter than that. Same again. Just going to thread the russet knot through the loop. This is sticking through the russet knot. Okay, confession time. I've now hung it up the correct way. Uh, I had it 90 degrees out so. Uh, that was why there was only one tie up on the side. And then we have to attach the beautifully white clean guy ropes. I'm sure there's a proper knot for this, but around turn and two half hitches. Should be just fine. Something I'd be interested in hearing from you guys. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of these wire tent pegs because they pull out quite easily and they're not very strong. And I bought these ones off, I think I bought them off Amazon. They're the 10 inch ones. And uh, very little will pull those out. So I'm going to use those for the guys. There, I think that's looking a good shape. I think it'll probably, um, it, the, the creases will come out a bit more when I shut the doors. Um, but I'll go and, 
guy out the other side and then we'll see what it looks like then. Perfect. Didn't use all of the sections of the chimney because I don't need to. Just a ticket. Right. Let's get the rest of the uh, equipment into the tent. I'm using the Hennessy hammock again today. Um, so everything seems to be in. So this is what I've managed to get it to look like. I'm quite pleased with it. Although... And this is it from the other side. Now this is, this is actually quite exciting. I had never thought of uh, being able to light a fire with steel. Um, I know you have the flint and steel which makes the spark, but you wouldn't think you could catch steel alight. But wire wool does, as I shall now hopefully demonstrate. So we've got some, uh, this is quadruple zero wire wool. And when you're whacking a spark around, just make sure you put the lid back on your tinder bag. So, I've got a standard flint and steel. So we put the wire wool onto the flint, like so. And then, look at that. Yeah, we'll try it. Off it goes, just from wire wool. Absolutely incredible. It's all set up in there, the fire's going. So it's uh, really rather comfy. Let's a quick look around the inside. That'll be me. And then down onto the stove. <clears throat> I've got some lights today because uh, it's getting so dark now, so early. Okay, so, <clears throat> a little bit of butter. A bit of oil. A bit of the oil and butter. Today, on the menu, is chicken fricasso. And you're supposed to use chicken that has the skin on, but I couldn't get it anywhere. And my apologies. So now, we just have to brown it a bit. A bit of a cooked refreshment. Mm, that'll do. I don't want them too cooked because uh, otherwise they go dry. So I'll put them down here on the grill. I'll show you in a sec. Um, there's a grill next to the wood burner, which just keeps everything warm. So next we're in with the onions. And this hot tent is just about to smell unbelievably tasty. And whilst they're doing that, I'll just show you the, uh, the dish down beside the wood burner down here. It just keeps the chicken warm so that when we're ready to go with the rest of it, so 
here. Good. So the onions are just just clearing now. So I'm going to put the uh, couple of sprigs of thyme in. And just a hint of garlic. <laughs> this is uh, garlic paste. Um, sorry, garlic paste. So we're going to, I think, reason them out of that. I like garlic. I might well stink tomorrow, but never mind. We'll put some mushrooms in. Now I understand there's no point in browning the mushrooms because uh, once you put the stock in, the brown disappears. So. Um, but we might just sweat them a little bit, so I'll pop the lid on a couple of minutes. Okay, they've been uh, <coughs> sweating a little bit and the mushrooms have been doing quite nicely, so I'm just going to put a bit of flour in because that's what's going to thicken the sauce later on. But we just need to uh, cook it out to take the flouriness out of it, so we'll put a little bit of flour in. So I'm going to put some stock in now because the flour's all cooked down. So. Unctuous sauce. I'm just going to add a chicken stock cube in just to give it a little bit more oomph. And I'm now going to pop the chicken back in. So we've done the uh, the hard part, and now it's in with a little white wine. <laughs> because French cooking isn't French without wine, is it? Chef's taste. <laughs> Delicious. But now's the time to take the chicken out and uh, just put the cream in and thicken up the sauce because the chicken's cooked. Let's put that down back on that heated tray down the bottom there. Got a bit of uh, double cream to go in. Okay, so the sauce is nicely thickened up now. So I'm just going to plate it up. I have no idea whether this is going to work or not, but uh, you never know if you don't try. Tell you that this sauce is delicious. There's a little bit too much uh, liquid, but uh, with the garnish and what would a meal like that be? without a nice cool glass of Chardonnay. You have to have your bushcraft wine glass. <laughs> well, 
Well, that was a fantastic meal. That was really nice. A couple of small changes I'd make next time. Um, the I put a bit too much stock in, and so it was really hard to get it to thicken up, but uh, it, it did it in the end. Um, and I also used a packet of um, ready-made mashed potato, and so I couldn't really dictate the consistency of it, which um, it, it didn't. It, it was a bit more sloppy than I, I would have liked. But uh, aside of that, that was a, a very tasty, tasty supper. So I just like to say, cheers, and I, I'll go with that one. Um, another one-pot meal, um, but really, really good, really good. Um, it's a shame that I didn't have some of that uh, sourdough baguette that I had last time because uh, there's a, quite a bit of sauce left over and I, I, I think I could have nailed that baguette. But uh, hey ho. Anyway, um, I will put the hammock up a bit later um, and next time I come I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some bungees around the ridge line and bungee the hammock up so that it's already there and that way I don't have to be going outside when it's dark. I just let it down, go to bed. It's a little bit cloudy and foggy but uh, this is apparently the winter solstice. I'll try and back out a bit so you can see it a bit better. And this is where I lit my fire last night <clears throat> using wire wool. All it is. It's wire wool and a flint. And you just try and get a spark onto it. Get a spark onto it. So this is the first outing of the Shadow Camping Plant Pot Tandoor, which I thought would be quite a nice way to cook the curry out in the woods. Um, it's just got some uh, insulation and chicken wire to hold the insulation on round the sides. Um, and then it's got the saucer as a lid, which I cut a hole in, and then another lid just to uh, keep it a bit warmer in there. So uh, I should be firing that up in a minute and we'll see how it goes, uh, gets up to temperature or not. Fingers crossed. I'm just using a charcoal starter to uh, light the charcoal. I'm not ready to cook in the tandoor but I want to make sure that it's going to work otherwise I've got to think of another, another way of doing the curry. So we'll get that going and uh, then put it into the tandoor and see what temperature it gets up to. Okay, the charcoal is uh, is going nicely, so it's time to put it into the tandoor. So we just swing around to that. So we'll get a bit more over it. We took the charcoal in. Great these jet starters. Hopefully it isn't going to crack. Well, I just heard a, a large crack or a bang. So uh, it's cracked. I don't know whether it's terminal yet, but nothing's falling out of the bottom just yet. Um, I kind of figured that would probably happen, even though you do fire these things in a, in a clay oven. But uh, there you go, live and learn. So we'll see whether it gets hot enough and uh, go from there. So we're up to 215 degrees Celsius, which I don't think is quite not, not bad at all. Just 
start cooking soon. Whilst the tandoor is heating up, I'm going to uh, start cooking the gravy. So a bit of oil. I'm just going to soften the other onions and peppers. And one of ginger, maybe one and a half, give it a bit more fire. I'm going to go over the spices now. So we've got garam masala, turmeric, ground coriander and a madras chilli, uh, curry powder. So I'm just going to put that in and toast that off and mix it all up with the onions and the peppers. Some chopped tomatoes in now. And I'll bring that up to a simmer. <coughs> Tomato puree, put a tablespoon of that or so in. In the chilies. So we've got red and green chilies. We've got quite a lot because they look quite like a, a nice warm curry. Now we just need to leave that to simmer for uh, an hour or an hour or so. And we'll go from there. Okay, we have nearly 250 degrees, or 242.9 uh, near the top of the tandoor. So I reckon it's time to uh, go for it. I've got these skewers, which uh, you, know, you can see all of them, and they're quite long. There's a chicken, I just put it on the skewer, and uh, Just have a check and see how it's doing. I well, certainly get in there, isn't it? Cracking. Give it another couple of minutes. Oh, it's been a couple of minutes. Okay, now I think another minute or two. The gravy's bubbling away inside. Um, I've made some naan breads, which I'll uh, I'll try cooking those in a bit. But I want to get this into the gravy so that it's uh, it's all the flavours are combining. I just tried the gravy, and I can tell you it's quite warm. Oh. Okay, I think uh, I'm comfortable with that. I'm going to pop that in the gravy, and I'll put the in fact I put the other skewer in now. Right, I think this one's done now. That's uh, about that then. I'll go and pop that in the gravy now, and then we'll uh, try the naan. I made these earlier, um, and I've just knocked them back and just formed them into just uh, balls, and I'm just going to roll them out. Um, read the recipe and it said uh, bread flour is best. So I looked in the cupboard and there was some bread flour. I didn't realise it was whole grain. <laughs> These might be the first whole grain naan 
Never mind. Let me see. Okay, so I'll try that and see what happens. It's cracked quite a lot in there. Fingers crossed that we don't end up with something in the, uh, well, almost a disaster. Stop that there for a minute. Bit of charcoal in there. Right there. Well, I would have said that was more of a flatbread than a naan bread, but... It's probably the flour. <laughs> probably not your textbook naan. But uh, I think they'd be rather good at soaking up that, uh, that gravy. Probably had enough now. Tell you what's hot in there. Two hundred and seventy-four and a half degrees. So it's got hot enough to cook the knob. So that's the naan bread drizzled in butter. With a bit of coriander or cilantro. And we're ready to rock and roll. How's about that then? Let's see what's happening to this then. <laughs> Something like that's thick enough a bit, so I'll leave the lid off. Gnarly bits of chicken, lovely. Well, I reckon that's just about ready, so uh, unfortunately because I've only got one hob, then I have to uh, put the rice on separately, So, uh, and I've, I've cheated, I've got some uh, a bag of already cooked rice, so uh, I'm just going to warm it up. So I'll warm it up and then uh, I'll be back to you to uh, plate it up. But before I do, let's just try a bit of this naan bread in the sauce. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I might not bother with the rice. You keep dipping this in. This is really nice. Very impressive, that. Especially as it's the wrong flour. And uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you will know that I didn't uh, put any coconut in. Because I forgot it. But, uh, right. Thickened up nicely. Chicken's still got the gnarly bits from the tandoor. I didn't didn't film <coughs> doing the rice because it's uh, out of the packet. So. Something for certain this evening. I won't be getting cold. It'll be cheerless not to. A bit of chopped coriander. <coughs> and of course, a naan bread. Now, 
I think that's a really rather tasty supper. Well, <clears throat> I can honestly say that was really, really tasty. Um, it had just about the right amount of spice to it. It was uh, warm but not ridiculously hot. Um, the naan bread, they were really interesting. Um, they didn't puff up like the the normal naan bread, but they were still, um, it was kind of one big air bubble. Um, but no, they were really tasty. Um, so yeah, I'm just relaxing now. Um, and I've got to, uh, I've got my uh, tent feet on. They're, uh, they're <clears throat> I think they're called hut, hut slippers from Rab. They look a bit strange, but uh, they're nice. They've got a rubber sole, so that you can wear them in the tent and nip outside. They're great. So yes, um, just going to relax now, have a cup of tea, and uh, and put the hammock up, I suppose, go to bed. So, uh, hmm. see you in the morning. Good morning everyone. Well, absolutely cracking night. I um, kept the wood burner in during the night, um, just really low, just ticking over, and uh, it kept the hot tent really nice and warm, still. Um, that was a fantastic curry last night, it was really tasty. Um, I've looked at the tandoor this morning and uh, it has got a massive crack in it, so I might have to do something about that. I'm not quite sure what yet, but uh, anyway. I'd like to take the opportunity to wish you all a really happy Christmas. I hope everyone has a good time and uh, just enjoys Christmas in a way that we couldn't last year. Um, I'll be back uh, at some point between Christmas and the New Year with another video and uh, we'll get together then. So, happy Christmas. <laughs>